Spring training is a beautiful time on the baseball calendar. There's hope in the air across all of Major League Baseball and its fans. Something spring training is known for is the chance to see players you may only see represent a big league club a small handful of times. In spring training of 2015, there was a particular player who had both a small cup of coffee in the big leagues while also unofficially breaking the record for most teams played for in one day. This man's name was Will Ferrell. Check baseball reference if you don't believe me because Will has his own page. Will Ferrell, aka Mr. Step Brothers, <laughs> Saturday Night Live. After a supper of jackrabbit haunches, we laid out beneath the stars. Somewhere in the distance, we heard the pounding of native drum. <laughs> and a bunch of other critically acclaimed projects is, as Google says, an American actor, comedian, writer, producer, and businessman. But what some of you may not know is that he used to be quite the athlete in high school. He played a variety of sports including football, basketball, soccer, and baseball, and apparently was a pretty good athlete, seeing as how he set the school record for the most field goals in one game. You also may have seen him display his athletic ability in films such as Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, and Semi Pro. But on March 12, 2015, he quote unquote took his game to the next level when he played every position on the baseball field for 10 different MLB teams in one day during spring training. Imagine this. You sit down at your favorite team stadium, hot dog in hand, ready to watch another great day of baseball. The first pitch comes down and it's fouled straight into the air and lo and behold, Will freaking Farrell rips off his catcher mask and catches the ball. Well, it may not have quite win like that, seeing as how everyone knew he was going to be there, especially since one of the games he literally landed on the field in a helicopter. But he did do something like this in 2010 when he came out on the field for an Astros minor league team with a six pack and a fake mustache as Venezuelan criminal Billy Ray Rojo Johnson. We'll drop that link in the description if you want to check out that wild footage. Let's give some context because this wasn't done just as a, hey, this will be a funny documentary to film with Will. The main reason behind this project was to raise awareness and money for a charity started by a man named Craig Pollard, a college baseball player who developed cancer, which in turn ended his career. The charity is meant to give scholarships to other cancer survivors, and in doing this project, they were able to raise over $1 million for the charity. Now that we have the score set, let's get into game one. First game of the day, Will starts off playing shortstop for the Oakland A's facing the Seattle Mariners. And to be honest, nothing really happens as far as anything relating to Will. That is, until Mr. Moneyball himself, Billy Bean, traded Will to the Mariners during the game. Now, maybe this was because of the feud between Farrell and the A's infielder, Marcus Simeon. Farrell was quoted telling Simeon, I could catch fire today and you could be back on a bus to AAA. Will then went on to play second base for the Mariners, have zero balls hit to him, didn't even have an at bat, and then proceeded to become a Los Angeles Angel in short order. At this point, Will seems pretty fed up and beat down after being cut from two different teams in one day. But he hasn't given up yet and continues to persevere throughout the next games. Game two of the day was a special one for Will because he played center field for his hometown team, the LA Angels. He is a huge Dodgers fan though. Will would take the field for the Angels replacing the previous year's American League MVP, Mike Trout. Trout would go on to win two more MVPs and become the unquestioned best player in baseball within a couple years, but today he was more or less Farrell's backup. Now, this was the first time he ever got some action and was actually able to keep it under control. The Cubs hit a line drive towards Will and he actually managed to field it and hit his cutoff man to hold the guy at first base. Albeit not the cleanest play I've ever seen. Right out there, does a good job, fires the ball towards second and holds. But, hey. He was then traded to the Chicago Cubs for a washing machine, which is actually a reference to one of his older movies. The positions he's then playing for the Cubs are the third base coach and eventually first baseman. Gotta say, definitely one of the most unique yet effective techniques I've ever seen in all of baseball. Farrell with the sign saying, swing as hard as you can. And that was when the uh, big sign that Will Farrell's holding up says, take a pitch. Outstanding stuff. After giving some of the greatest calls I've ever seen, he would then go on to hit for the pros for the very first time and unceremoniously strike out on three pitches. Nothing really came of him being a first baseman, so the Cubs traded him to the Arizona Diamondbacks in exchange for a churro dog and a D-bat dog. The sweet treat was promptly eaten by Will as soon as he arrived in the Diamondbacks dugout. Mm -hmm. 
Game three starts with Will as left fielder for the Arizona Diamondbacks. With the runner on first, the batter hits a liner to left center, which lands in between Will and the center fielder, bringing the guy from first all the way home. After this, another ball is hit short to Will, and he charges it with arguably the least hustle ever given in a professional league, and that leaves more damage done to the D-back pitching. Once this complete disgrace to fielding and prevention of the Diamondback's success is all said and done, he's soon traded to the Cincinnati Reds, appeasing Diamondback fans everywhere. Will, now playing for the Reds, spends yet another inning with not much play. He does, however, keep the team in high spirits as he sits in the dugout cheering them on with various beards made out of different food items such as sunflower seeds and tortilla chips. Game number four, Will starts to run a little behind schedule. So what's the reasonable thing to do? Land on the field in a helicopter, of course. This is the bar where they're playing copyrighted music. This is the bar where copyrighted music is being played. Come on, baby, go fear the copyrighted music. Huh? After this big show of an entrance, he starts the game for the Chicago White Sox as their designated hitter. The outfield must have seen the scouting report for Will's at-bats for the Cubs, seeing as how they came in just about as far as they could, completely underestimating Will. The first two pitches come down and they're both wash balls. <laughs> Watch balls. <laughs> Third pitch is a called strike and the fourth is a swing and a miss. But after this, something magical happens. He actually manages to foul a pitch off. Will Ferrell has just made contact with a pitch for the first time in his entire professional career. Then he immediately strikes out. But hey, that's, that's something, right? Walking back to the dugout, seemingly defeated with his tail between his legs, Will was then traded to the San Francisco Giants to be their new catcher. Catching some warm-up pitches goes fine, but as soon as it's game time, they choose to intentionally walk the first hitter and get rid of Will. He's quite upset by this and has a very good conversation with the coach about it before his time as a big league catcher is over. Game 5. Last game of the day. Dodgers vs. Padres. Now, this is when Will really gets to show off all the talent he's been building up for all these years. He will start the game by pitching for the Dodgers. First batter of the day comes up, Rico Noel. Farrell comes down with an absolutely beautiful 120 mile an hour knuckleball and somehow Rico is able to actually bunt it off towards first base. Will cleanly fields the ball and gets the guy out at first with a perfect little toss. Even with his career zero ERA and whip for the Dodgers, he is instantly removed from the pitcher position. Completely outraged, and for good reason, Will throws a rampage down in the Dodgers dugout. Say that one three times in a row fast. Gloves are flying and coolers full of some sort of magical sports juice are being flung everywhere. Absolute carnage. After Will goes feral in the Dodgers dugout, he gets his last playtime of the day as the right fielder for the Padres. Scoreless, heading into the ninth inning, Farrell takes the field. This is also the first time his number has been switched from 19. He will be playing as number 20 due to the fact that Tony Gwynn's number was 19 and it has been retired by the Padres. With Will set up in right field, Jock Peterson would immediately smash a home run right over his head. Would have been nice if he got a little more play towards him, but the last out of the day is an infield fly ball to the third baseman, and with that, Will ends his professional baseball career forever. After his absolutely outstanding baseball career, Will went on to give one of the most inspiring, touching, and heartwarming speeches in all of baseball history. I'd like to thank you, thank you all for today. Thank you. As much of a fun event this was for baseball and the charity, it seems to not be discussed enough. In the five years since Will's excellent adventure, no one has mentioned his record 10 teams in one day. Albeit, it was spring training, so it didn't really count. Nonetheless, beat that, Edwin Jackson. He recently set the record for most teams played for in a career. Well, if you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you. Uh, this was this was a really fun one to make. I'd highly recommend the documentary as it's it's Will Ferrell. It's it's gonna be funny. If you did happen to make it to the end, comment free Rojo Johnson. Anyways, have a nice day. See ya.